This is a level 2 functional skills math paper from AQA. It's split into two parts. In the first part, you can't use a calculator, but you can in the second part. This is the first part. Question 1. Here is a scatter diagram. Four of the points are labelled. Which one of these points is an outlier? Circle your answer. As you can see from the points, this seems to be a negative correlation. So line of best fit will go something like this. And the point that is further away from the line than most of the other points, that is C, as you can see. Work out. 942,795 minus 350,823. Since we can't use a calculator, I'll use the column method to do this. So 942,795 take away, that's six digits as well. So 350. 8, 2, 3. So I've lined them up correctly. I've got units under the units, tens under the tens, and so on. So now 5 take away 3 gives me 2. 9 take away 2 gives me 7. 7 take away 8 means I've got to borrow 1 from the 2. So this becomes 17. Take away 8 gives me 9. 1 take away 0 is 1. 4 take away 5 means I've got to borrow 1 from the 9, so it becomes an 8, and this becomes 14. Take away 5 gives me 9, 8 take away 3 gives me 5. If I want to read the number, it helps to put a comma in there. So 591,972. The frequency tree shows information about the colour of 44 items. One of the items is chosen at random. Work out the probability that the item is blue. Give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So blue, we've got 24 of them. Out of the total, which is 44. So, as we've got to give it in its simplest form, going to have to divide 24 and 44 by the same number. I'll go with 2. So if I divide by 2, I get 12 and 22. I can still divide by 2. So I can go 6 over 11. Now I've got to a point where I can't cancel this any further. So I'm going to leave it at 6 elevenths work out 19 percent of 150 since we can't use a calculator i'll use a 10 percent method so 10 percent of 150 that is 150 divided by 10 which means knocking off a zero so that gives us 15. Now, from this point, I could take different directions. I could work out 5% and then 1% multiplied by 4. So, in other words, I'll do 10 and then 5% and then 1% plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So that gives us 19% in total. However, this is long-winded, it takes time as well. So what I'm going to do instead is 20 take away 1% to give me the 19%. So I've got the 10% which is going to help me work out 20% because now I can just double the 15 to give me 30. 1% that is 
150 divided by 100, which at this level all you should know is about moving the decimal point two places to the left to make this 1.5. So 20% take away the 1%, so that means 30 take away 1.5. It has no decimal point and I can add that with a zero at the end doesn't make any difference so I've got to take away five from the zero which means I need to borrow one from the zero here but there isn't anything to borrow there so I'm gonna borrow it from the three three becomes a two this becomes the ten now I can borrow for this so this becomes 9 and this becomes 10. 10 take away 5 gives me 5. 9 take away 1 gives me 8. 2 take away 0 gives me 2. So 28.5. We've got to work out the size of angle X and the size of angle y for this question. Now this might look really daunting and you're thinking how do I work this out? What do we know at this level? We know that angles on a straight line equal 180. So this one here which is 115 and this one here they will total 180. So I'll just work out this one by going 180 take away 115. So 10 take away 5 gives me 5, 7 take away 1 is 6, 1 take away 1 is 0. So that is 65 degrees. Now I need to get to the x, work out the value for x. Again, we know that angles on a straight line will add up to 180. So 65 and the x will make 180. So if I do 180 take away 65, it gives me 115. So x is equal to 115. Now you notice that x is the same as this angle over here. These are called vertically opposite angles. Again, these are the things that you look at GCSE level. But just for now, we've found a way to get to that. Now we're going to work out y. Now, to work out y, you will have noticed that these two lines are parallel. So, these angles here will be identical to these angles here. As you can see, this was 65 and this will be 65. So y is equal to 65 degrees. Baby. Jo has the baby. She calls the baby Ella. The graph can be used to convert between grams and ounces. At birth, Ella weighed 3.5 kilograms. Did Ella weigh more than 8 pounds? Use 1 pound equals 16 ounces. You must show you're working. So, 3.5 kilograms. We've only got grams, so we've got to convert it into grams first. So in one kilogram, there are 1,000 
grams, the clues in the word, K means a thousand. So 3.5 kilograms will be 3,500 grams. So that is here. Hundred and twenty two four hundred and twenty four ounces. We've got to work out whether that is more than eight pounds. So in one pound, there are sixteen ounces. So if I divide 124 by 16, does it give me more than 8? So 124 divided by 16. How many 16s would fit into 124? 16 and 16, that gives us 32. So that's two lots. That's more than 32. So if I add 32 to 32, so double it, that will be four lots of 16. That gives us 464. Again, that is more than 124. Now, if I add another 64 to make these eight lots, that will be... 128 so that is more than 124 so practically we are proven here that 8 times 16 is 128 not 124 so this is not correct so we don't even need to finish the division in here it would be 7 something. But we've got what we need. This is 128. So we're going to say, did Ella weigh more than 8 pounds? No. 8 pounds is 128 ounces. Or something similar. Here are the birth weights of seven other babies born on the same day as Ella. Joe's mum says Ella's weight of 3.5 kg is more than the average weight of the other seven babies. Joe says it depends on which type of average you use. Show that Joe is correct. Kind of the main averages that we use in everyday life are mean and median so let's just compare those two let's work out the mean and the median of these weights so to work out the mean we're going to add the numbers together so we've got 2.3 at 2.5 at 2.7 at 3.6 add 4 and 4 and 4 that is 12 we could do 0, 0.0 as well there. So 3 and 7, that is 10. 5 and 6 is 11. 10 and 11, that's 21. So 1 down and 2 carried over. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 13. And that's 2. So 23.1 which we now need to divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 23.1 divided by 7. How many 7s fit into 23? That is 3 of them which makes 21. So there is 2 remaining. Now we've got a decimal point here which we need to transfer over here as well. And we look at how many 7s into 21. And that is exactly 3. So the mean 
is 3.3 kilograms which if we use that it means that Joe Joe's mum is correct in saying that Ella's weight is more than the average because 3.5 is higher than the 3.3 that we've got here. Well, let's see, does the median make any difference? Will the median be higher than 3.5? So to work out the median, we've got to put numbers in order. And have we got them in order already? That looks like it. So the middle number, if we cross out both sides, we've got 3.6. So median is 3.6 kilograms, which is higher than 3.5. So Joe is correct. It depends on what type of average you use. And we've shown that she's correct with the working out. Jo sees the special offer on a pack of nappies. Got nappies, pack of 25, usual price six pounds, 75 pence. One third of usual price. Jo normally buys nappies that cost 20 pence each. How much will Jo save per nappy by buying this pack? You must show you're working. Okay, so the usual price is six seventy-five, and this is one third off. So we're going to divide this by three. How many threes fit into six? That's exactly two. Transferring the decimal point over. How many threes fit into seven? That is two, and we have one remaining. How many threes into 15? That is 5. So 225 discount. So 675 take away 225. That's 0. That's 5. That is 4. So £4.50 for 25 nappies. Now We've got to work out how much will Joe save per nappy. So £4.50, we're going to divide it by 25. As the answer will be in pence, I think we should just convert this into pennies first. So that is 450 divided by 25. And that will be a bit easier for us. So, how many 25s will fit into 45? Can 2 fit? No, because 25 and 25 is 50. So just 1. And then we carry over 20. Now, how many 25s will fit into 200? So 25 and 25, that is 50. 50 and 50, that is 100. So this was two lots, this is four lots. So four lots of 25 gives us 100. And eight lots will give us exactly 200. So 18 pence, that's the cost of one nappy 18 pence question is how much she will save so from the 21p take away the 18 that leaves us with three pence so let's just write it here three pence and this is the end of this first part.